In other videos, I've covered freezing point depression. In this video, I want to focus on boiling point elevation. The equations for boiling point elevation and freezing point depression are very similar. One, assume a thousand grams of water. The other is for any quantity of water. Let's first take a look at the two equations for a thousand grams of water. The freezing point depression equation should look very familiar. Delta T, the change in temperature, equals N, the number of ions in the formula unit of an ionic compound, or 1 if it's a molecular compound. So N times 1.86 times the moles of the solute. Boiling point elevation equation is very similar, except that we're going to use 0.512 because we're talking about boiling point elevation rather than freezing point depression. If you are not told the 1,000 grams of water is used to prepare the solutions, then you'll be given a concentration, either a molarity or molality. For the problems you'll be doing, the molarity will be the molality. Focus on the word molarity, because that's something you understand. The equations for freezing point depression and boiling point elevation look very similar to what we see above. Slight differences, instead of moles of solute, we have molarity in both of the equations. In this problem, we're given a particular quantity of moles in a thousand grams of water. So we're going to use the first set of equations. The N is two because there's one sulfur and one nitrate in the formula. For the freezing point depression, you calculate the delta T as two times 1.86 times 0.54, which gives us a temperature change of 2.01. This is then subtracted from zero to give us a new freezing point of negative 2.01. For the boiling point elevation, looks very similar, except we use 0.512 rather than 1.86. This gives us a temperature change of 0.55, which is then added to 100 to give a new boiling point of 100.55. In this problem, we are not given 1,000 grams of water. We are given a molarity, and the assumption here is that the molar concentration is the same as the molal concentration. So we could proceed and use the second set of equations, where we substitute in the molarity in the equation rather than moles. For this formula, N is 3 because there's two sodiums and one sulfate in the formula. For the freezing point temperature change, the delta T is 3 times 1.86 times 0.7. Then we subtract 3.91 from 0 to give us a new freezing point of negative 3.91. The delta T for the boiling point is 3 times 0.512 times 0.7, which is 1.08. Then we add the 1.08 to 100 to get our new boiling point of 101.08. Here we're given two solutions, one of sodium iodide and the other of potassium iodide. The exact same gram quantity and the same volume of water. We are asked to determine what effect the solutes have on boiling points of these solutions. For both solutions, we could apply the equation delta T equals N times 0.512 times molarity. But we do not necessarily need to carry out the complete calculation. Here's why. The values of N, 0.512, and the volume are identical in our calculations. Therefore, what we could do is compare the molar masses of each solute, because the different molar masses will give us different moles of each of these solutes. Both compounds are iodides, and they differ by their cations. The potassium cation is heavier than the sodium. In 5 grams of each of these compounds, there are more moles of sodium chloride than there is potassium because the sodium has a smaller molar mass. 5 divided by a smaller number will give a large amount of moles as compared to 5 divided by a larger number which will give a fewer amount of moles comparatively speaking. Therefore the molarity of NaCl is greater than that of KCl because the molarity of NaCl is greater than KCl, that will generate a larger delta T. The answer to the question 
is that sodium iodide will have a higher boiling point than potassium iodide.